brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the best of all sharia, with the best sharia. He has given the final message to Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do except that it is better for us. It is either purely good or predominantly good. And there is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from and said that we cannot do this thing and warns us from doing it except that it is purely evil or its evil outweighs its good. And from this category is the prohibition of khamar in Islam. That is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden intoxicants in Islam. He has forbidden for us to go anywhere near intoxicants as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran, he said, they ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about al-khamr. They ask you about intoxicants. And they ask you, khamr, by the way, khamr, usually can be translated as wine. But khamr is anything that alters the mind, as we'll get to, inshallah ta'ala. So don't look at it and just say, oh, this is only referring to something that you go drink. Let if you shoot it up, if you snort it, if you swallow it, it can all come under the category of al-khamr, if it is mind-altering. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They ask you about khamr, and they ask you about gambling. Say that in them there is some benefit. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ Say that there is great sin in both of them, both in khamr and gambling. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ And there's some benefit for the people. وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا But the sin that is involved in them is greater than the benefit. Is greater than the benefit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَانِ رِجِسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, he's talking to the believers. He says, O oh, you who believe, khamr and gambling and al-ansab, that is to slaughter on these stone altars for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal azlan, which is a form of divination, or basically like the lottery, where you make decisions based off of chance. That all of this is from the handiwork of shaytan, fajtanibu. So stay away from it if you want to be successful. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصِدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Shaytan only wants to divert your attention. He wants to cause enmity between you and your brothers. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ and with gambling. And he wants to يَسُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Lock you from the remembrance of Allah and divert you from that and from the salat. So will you not stop? This, brothers and sisters in Islam, many of us may not look at this as being an issue. Yeah, everybody knows. Muslim and non-Muslim alike, that Muslims are not supposed to come close to khamr, that we're supposed to avoid those intoxicants. But do we really understand the importance of this? Because unfortunately what we have in our communities is that some of the people who own the stores in which khamr is being served, they're Muslims. So not only are they harming themselves, but they're harming the community as a whole. Or some people may say that, oh, some of this is natural. It's okay to smoke weed because weed is, you know, marijuana is natural. Natural what? Because it came from the earth. There's a whole lot of things that come from the earth that are natural that we can't come close to. In fact, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this, but there are things that come out of your body that are natural. Would you drink it? Would you eat it? After it comes out of your, it's natural. 
So just because it comes from the earth, this is the, the rationale that some people use to justify going and doing things that will alter their minds. The Prophet ﷺ told us in several authentic hadith, كل مسكر خمر وكل مسكر حرام. The Prophet ﷺ said that everything that intoxicates is considered to be khamr. Everything that intoxicates, whether it's heroin or cocaine or marijuana or any type of wine or beer or opioids or anything else, anything that intoxicates is considered to be khamr. That means you can't use it, you can't sell it, you can't distribute it, you can't be a part of its manufacturing process. Kullu muskirin khamr. All, anything that intoxicates is khamr. Wa kullu muskirin haram. And everything that intoxicates is haram. And the Prophet went on to say, one of the hadiths of Sahih Muslim, he says, so whoever dies, well, who are you the had? That is, that he is addicted to this khamr. Falem yatub, and he did not repent, then he will not be able to drink it in the hereafter. And as we know, one of the pleasures of Jannah is that a person gets to drink from rivers of wine. And so the scholars have interpreted this to me, interpreted this to me, that this is a threat from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the one who dies, addicted to any intoxicant, will be prevented from entering paradise. And the Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us in another authentic hadith, Sunan Abi Dawood, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْخَمْرِ وَشَارِبَهَا وَسَاقِيَهَا وَبَائِعَهَا وَمُبْتَاعَهَا وَعَاصِرَهَا وَمُعْتَصِرَهَا وَحَامِلَهَا وَالْمَحْمُولَةَ إِلَيْهِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May the curse of Allah, this is dua from the Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was sent as a rahmah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as a mercy to mankind. For him to say, may Allah's curse be upon anyone, we should take that seriously. Because he wasn't a person, the Prophet ﷺ was merciful, he was kind, he was gentle, he didn't just go around cursing people. The Prophet ﷺ said, may the curse of Allah be upon Khamar, the one who drinks it, the one who pours it, that it serves it, the one who sells it, the one who buys it, the one who compresses it. The one whom it is compressed for, meaning the company, like we can use today's term, the company and the one who works in that company producing it. And the one who distributes it. I don't deal with that bit yet, but it's in the back of your truck and you're going to deliver it somewhere. And the one to whom it is carried. Khamar is cursed. And again, don't put in your mind the comer of the time of the Prophet name only, and you're only thinking of wine. All of it. Anything that intoxicates. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Bani Adam with an aql. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, with an intellect. He's blessed us with a mind that we can distinguish between what right and wrong. That we can know the revelation that comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him through that revelation, through understanding that revelation. And this is a blessing. Wallahi, this, the, 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 the scholars of Islam have mentioned that every deen, including Islam, has come to preserve five things. The deen itself, life, and your mental health, your mental well-being, soundness of mind. Your honor or your progeny and your wealth. Every deen comes to protect them. And so the deen of Islam has come to protect the aql. In fact, some of the people who are in hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us their story in the Quran. And they said to the people of Jannah, Lo kunna nasma'u, o naqilu, o naqil, ma kunna fi ashab If we would have just listened, 
or maybe used our aql, we used our mind, then we wouldn't be from amongst the people of the fire, the blazing fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this blessing and then we go do what? We use something that takes that blessing away. It doesn't make sense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ni'mah of sight. Would you go now and just take a pen and stab your eye out? Both of them so you can't see anymore. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stick something in your ear so you can't hear anymore. Who would do that intentionally? But yet we use these things that alter our ability to reason. The sound mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala karma bin Adam that he, that he blessed and honored the children of Adam with that make us different from an animal. And so we see some people who by no fault of their own, maybe they've lost their mind. Maybe it's a car accident. They, they, they no longer, what, what's their state? That's what you want to be? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Alhamdu ummul khabaith. That khamr, intoxicants, is the mother of all despicable things, of all evil things. And then he tells us a story. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala. He tells us the story about an immoral woman who wanted to, uh, she wanted this man to, to sleep with her, but he was a pious man. And she knew that she couldn't just get him like that. And so she sent out her servant to him to say, hey, we need you to witness something. We need you to bear witness to something. And so he went, and as he navigated through the house, every time he went through the servant, the, the female servant, she began to close the doors behind him a lot until he got to where the woman was. And next to her was a young boy and a glass of wine. She said to him, you had, she said, I didn't bring you here to testify to anything. You got one of three choices. She threatened him. She said, you can either kill this boy here, or you can sleep with me, or you can drink the wine. So now he starts running it through his head, saying the lesser of all of those evils is what? I don't, I'm not going to take somebody's life. I'm not going to commit zina. The lesser of all those evils is to drink the wine. So he drank the wine, and he got drunk, and he killed the boy, and he slept with the woman. And so it's man of the Allah Ta'ala and who said, Wallahi, mutmin or idman al khamr, to be addicted to khamr and faith in Allah cannot exist in the same heart without one of them eventually pushing out the other. Without one of them eventually pushing out the other. So if that's your fitna, getting high, drinking, and so forth, know that that is a dangerous path. Our Prophet said, that the one who is addicted to any khamar is like the one who worships an idol. You see, because once you get addicted to it, your mind is attached to it, your heart is attached to it, you become like the one who worships an idol. Because that's where, that's, that's where all of your attention goes. And so it's important that we as Muslims recognize the evil of this to society, to ourselves, first and foremost, to our families, because you're wasting your money. When, you, when, when your mind is not right, you're not going to deal with the people around you right. And, and Shaitan wants that, he wants us to, to, to do things that cause enmity between each other. It may lead a person to all other types of corruption, violence, robbing people because he needs money to get his fix. And so we have to stay away from that for ourselves, but we also cannot be of the people who pollute society with this garbage. And unfortunately, unfortunately, maybe not in this country, but I remember in England several, a couple decades ago, that the majority of the people who own the wine shops in London in Leicester and Birmingham were Muslims, immigrant Muslims. 
And this is a shame. And it's not that we don't suffer from this in this country too, because we do. Our Prophet والسلام, told us in an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. He said that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called inna ala Allahi azza wa jal ahdan. He said there is a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will cause those who drink in this life to drink from the sweat of the people of the fire in the next life. Or whatever discharges from their body. You want to drink it in this life, know that there are consequences in this life and in the next. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullahi wa mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd Brothers and sisters in Islam, this topic didn't come from nowhere, didn't just pop up. We, we, we face an epidemic in this city and uh, around the nation, this, what they call the opioid crisis. In this city alone, in this city alone, Approximately three people die every day, every single day from opioid, from opioid alone, opioid overdose alone in this city. Not to mention heroin overdoses and the people who are using all types of drugs. And as a Muslim community, I think that oftentimes we think that we're immune and we're not. We think that because we pray, because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we love his messenger, that this is, that this is not happening in our community and it's happening in our community. And we have to stop uh, letting people suffer in silence. There's only one Muslim funeral home in this, country, in, in this city. And they do a tally every year of the causes of death. And the number two cause of death in the Muslim community here in Philadelphia is drug overdose. So we're not immune. We have people amongst us who are using drugs and overdosing on those drugs. And we have to get beyond this myth that some people think that it's okay to drink, but it's not okay to get drunk. No, it's not okay to do either. It's not okay to drink or smoke or pop pills or snort or anything else or shoot it into your veins or any of that other stuff or between your toes or whatever way they're doing it now. You can't, all of that is haram. And we, we who come to Jum'ah, the Yiddin I mean, most likely, we're not amongst those people, but we probably know people who are. We probably know other Muslims who are. And it's not okay to suffer in silence. It's not okay to write them off. You see, sometimes what happens is we actually help the shaitan in pushing this person further away from the deen. We used to have in this city, back in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a group called Al Kafal. And they specialized in helping Muslims who were addicted to substance, of, who suffer from substance abuse, overcome that. And part of the thing that they did, subhanAllah, was just pick them up for salat, take them to salat al fajr, get their hearts connected to the masjid, get them connected to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because once this mind and this heart is connected to Rabbul Alameen, the creator of the heavens and the earth, it will begin to heal. There was a man who at the time of the Prophet he used to have the nickname Himar, which means donkey. He was funny. He used to make the Prophet laugh. But he also used to get drunk a lot. So the Prophet used to punish him for that because there's a head in Islam for drunkenness public drunkenness. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would be brought and he would be lashed. 
And so one time, one of the companions said, Allahumma al Oh Allah, curse him. Ma atha maytabi. And he, look how often he's brought here because he just gets drunk all the time. And the Prophet said, La tal'an. Don't curse him. For wallahi, he said, by Allah, I, what I know is that he loves Allah and his message. So just because we see another Muslim who may get high or get drunk or don't write him off. Don't write him off or her off. Try to get them the help that they need. If you're suffering yourself from addiction or you know someone who is suffering from addiction, this thing is real here in the United States of America. And they are honestly, or it seems like, well, Law Adam, that they really do want to help people be treated. So there are national hot hotlines that you can call for treatment and they'll direct you and a lot of it or most of it is free. We have mental health professionals in the community. And like I said before, we used to have a real organization that helped Muslims overcome that substance abuse. I don't know that we have that anymore, but that's your responsibility. Don't look to the Imam to do everything. The Imam is trained a certain way. He's trained in the Quran, he's trained in the Islamic sciences. But we have other people in this community who are trained in mental health to help people with substance abuse. You all have to figure some kind of way to network with one another and, and give back to the community and help people. Because we're suffering. Don't think that this is a uniquely Catholic problem. No, we're dealing with this in our community as well. And so it's important that the people come together to create solutions for this. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with a sound mind, use that mind to gain that which is beneficial for you in this life and the hereafter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with that mind so that we would seek out, number one, his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so that we would do those things that bring us happiness in this dunya. Allah Azza wa Jalla did not prohibit us from those things that he prohibited us from as a means of deprivation or because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want his creation to have any fun or he doesn't want us to be happy. Quite to the contrary. It is the protection of this mind that will lead to happiness in this life and success in the next life.